Well, I don't know if you know, uh, you know, you were just saying 92, 93 when your kids were just born. There's a very interesting clip I have of something that happened to Harsha in 92, 93. I, I don't even know whether you know this. So let's, let's share the it's clip. very unlikely she doesn't know. So let's, let's share that clip. Stats, there's so many stats in, in cricket in this World Cup, you see them pop up all the time. So I've got an interesting stat for you. In 1992, you were voted as the most, the sexiest voice on Australian radio. <laughs> I don't know if it was a vote, but it was a Greek. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Greek. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it was a lady who wrote it. Really? And nobody had ever, and sadly thereafter, nobody has ever used that adjective about me. Really? <laughs> Whether it's the voice or whatever. <laughs> so I've, I've got a clipping of that back home and I look at it from time to time <laughs> to see if it's for, true, if it's for real. Are you, are you Susan Kur Kurosawa? Mm. Oh, Susan Kurosawa, who was the writer. Oh, I've been yes, trying to meet okay, her ever since. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> you had seen it. Exactly, I thought I it I don't was. mind. <laughs> now, you know what's interesting? Yeah, Gasha, you want to say go something? Go on, go on. No, uh, you know what is interesting is that uh, when I do research on what you, what you became in Australia, there's again an interesting story there, right? I mean, in, in, in terms of how you went about getting that Australian break. Uh, I mean, and, and at the end of it, I don't know how many people know how much they revere you in Australia in terms of your cricket, in terms of your commentary, and of course, being the sexiest voice in Australia, which is no mean task, I would say. Sexiest voice on radio, because they could not find anything else to assign that adjective to. <laughs> but I think they found the accent very different. Yep. Australia used to be a pretty closed country. And so they didn't have too many overseas accents there. They didn't know what an Indian accent sounded like. The first time I went to Australia, they said, so where did you learn your English? And I said, there's more people speaking English in India than Australia will have in the next 100 years. So we are, la we are a pretty decent English-speaking country. We learn English in our country. But they knew very little. So suddenly there's this curiosity. There's this guy who's, who's an English commentator who's giving the Aussies as good as he gets because that's what the Aussies respect in you. If yeah. you don't give as good as you get, they don't respect you. Yep. So if you fight back at them, they actually like it. Then they, didn't, they give you a lot more respect. So I found that if I gave back, the more I gave back, the more friends I made, I, I made in Australia. And radio is just the most beautiful medium in the world. So I enjoyed it. I, I still, I'm hoping to go back next year and do radio in Australia. It's amazing how many people in Australia listen to radio. Last year we were there and we had gone to a mall and we were buying ice cream. And the guy looks at him and says, you're the guy, Indian guy on radio, aren't you, covering the cricket? So they just recognize the voice. And I've always been told I have a great face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it works. Radio is a wonderful, nice, chatty medium. So that worked. But going to Australia in itself, in itself was a story. I mean, I, I wanted to do commentary on the BBC and I didn't know anybody there. And then there's a friend of mine who used to do work on Radio Australia, occasionally do little clippings. So I, I got a name from her and I, I faxed a letter to him. Fax in those days, by the way, was not very prevalent. We didn't have a fax at home. There was what was called a business center. I don't know if anyone remembers business centers. So you went to the business center and you faxed from there. If the reply came, the guy from the business center called you and said, reply aya hai. Then you go there and you pick up and he, he charged you for receiving the fax. So I, I sent a fax. I got a reply saying that I'm via Radio Australia, we're the overseas broadcasting arm, but ABC Radio does the domestic cricket. This is the person to write to. And then that person then replied to me saying, we've, we've not seen your work. We've not heard your work. And we are very particular with the quality that goes out on ABC Radio. So I had to send them a commentary clip. Where do I get my own commentary clip? Luckily, my father had recorded some of the radio commentary that I'd done. He also kept clippings of all the scores of mine when I was playing university cricket. Now, how do you send that? Because that's on a cassette, right? But that's the only cassette I have. So in those days, one of our clients actually at Rediffusion was Bush. And Bush used to make these dual cassette deck players. Yes. And that was the ultimate luxury. VCRs and all were far in the distance. So if you had a double cassette deck player, you could transfer from one cassette to the other. So we had a blank cassette at home, transferred commentary from that cassette, copied, copied it from that onto this, and I said, now I will courier this to Australia until I discover the cost of couriering it. And I came back and said, So I sent it by registered post. 
You didn't have all these couriers of at that course. time. It was just couriers were speakers. very expensive. So I sent it by registered post with rubber bands put around the cassette. I wrote a letter saying our style is very different. You might wonder why there's no other voice. So I explain how Indian commentary is different. And I put rubber bands around that, then put an envelope around it. Has anyone ever tried to write an address on something that's got rubber bands on the inside? <laughs> <laughs> then you have to write the address in the space between the rubber bands. So yeah, it was a fun story. But the, I mean, the cassette did reach them. They did watch it. They said, we'll give you an opportunity, but we won't pay you anything because you're the overseas commentator. You've got to fund yourself. Yeah. We are a government. Island. But one thing led to the other, yeah. Yeah, but it's been amazing, right? I mean, you're... It, it is a love story, yeah. And you seem to love Australia as a country. I'm now formally a friend of Australia for, uh, for Australian tourism. It made a lot of news recently when Pariniti Chopra was appointed. So as you can see, I don't have what Pariniti Chopra has, but... Uh, nah. <laughs> it, so it, it's, it's good fun, yeah. I've, I've enjoyed being that. I've seen a lot of Australia as a result. I've got to meet some wonderful people in Australia. And I like their way of life, which is being absolutely upfront, telling it as it is. And it's fine to have an argument. It's fine to disagree violently with each other. And you still have a meal together at the end. Isn't that a lovely way to live? Rather than calling each other all kinds of names and being violent with each other. I mean, I, I might have a violent argument with you about something. I might call you names and say you don't understand whatever. And once the argument is done, we go out and have a meal. It's a lovely way to live.